Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tony Deering. I'm a local partner with CBAC Gaming. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the official groundbreaking ceremony for Horseshoe Baltimore. This, <laughs> this will be a unique, privately financed undertaking that will attract millions of visitors to Charm City and serve as a catalyst for additional development here in South Baltimore. Now, I've overseen in my career a wide range of development projects throughout the country, and I can attest to the benefits that Horseshoe Baltimore will bring to the city and the state. Beyond new tax revenues, beyond jobs, Horseshoe Baltimore will serve as an anchor project around which new businesses will be created along Russell Street here south of Raven Stadium. Imagine five years from now, hotels, restaurants, retail stores, clubs, all along this corridor along Russell Street, it will be transformative for our great city. As we begin construction on Horseshoe Baltimore, I'm pleased to see a number of familiar faces with us today. Moving a project like this forward is very complex and never easy. And all of us, city residents and partners, owe a debt of gratitude to Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake, who's been instrumental in advancing economic development initiatives in Charm City. And thank you, Mayor, for being here today and for all that you've done with us. I also want to thank Lieutenant Governor Anthony Brown and Governor O'Malley, the leadership of the General Assembly, and particularly the Baltimore delegation for making this project possible. They've done a remarkable job. So, Senator, thank you very much. And lastly, we have representatives from our two local partnership groups, Arthur Adler from Kays Valley Partners and Jim Scott from PRT2. Shortly, we'll hear from Gary Loveman, Chairman, President, and CEO of Caesars Entertainment. But now I'd like to introduce a man that's really instrumental in making this happen. Jeff Cohen is a principal of Rock Gaming. Rock has joined with Caesars to develop highly successful urban casinos in the Midwest, and he has played an integral role in bringing Horseshoe Business Baltimore from the drawing board to today's groundbreaking. So please give a warm welcome to Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Good afternoon. On behalf of Dan Gilbert and the Rock Gaming team, thank you all for celebrating with us today. Our CBAC team has been working toward this day for more than 18 months. I'm more confident than ever that this development is going to be a great addition to the city of Baltimore. I know that Gary and Chad will tell you more about the facility that will rise up from this site over the coming months. What I want to focus on today is why we believe this downtown site is so essential to the success of this development, the positive impact that we'll have in downtown Baltimore. To do that, however, I need to take you on a journey back to Ohio in 2009. So please bear with me for a moment. Four years ago, Rock Gaming led and won a gaming referendum in the state of Ohio. That referendum was the fifth time that Ohio voters had gone to the polls since 1990. It had failed all previous attempts with its most recent failure in 2008, just one year prior to our initiative. We succeeded not because we promised that the casinos would be the panacea, but rather an opportunity which would serve as a catalyst, an economic platform by which you would use to help stimulate the urban core. In 2009, Ohio voters saw something different. They saw that these four casinos would not be developed in cornfields 20 miles outside their downtowns, but rather in their urban cores, promising and promoting tourism while providing a 24-7 entertainment option. Building and creating $100 million developments in Midwest urban cores comes with many of the same challenges we face here on the East Coast today. Real estate costs, physical construction, permitting, infrastructure enhancements, you name it. Well, cornfields, well, they're far less complicated. But what really makes the urban core different 
is not just in the design, but it's in the philosophy that goes behind the design. So you start with a design that's outwardly facing and inviting, with lots of windows and glass, with street-level pedestrian-friendly access. You limit the interior programming to encourage guests to explore some of the local restaurants, bars, hotels, and attractions. There's been a commitment to local construction companies, local vendors, local hiring goals with the intent to exceed, not just hit, local state and MBE requirements so that the people who live and support this community have the best opportunity to work on and in the casinos. So, why did we choose this more challenging course? It's simple. We fundamentally believe that the urban investment is the right thing to do for a community, and it's well worth the challenge. Horseshoe Cleveland has been opened over a year now, with Horseshoe Cincinnati a little more than three months. In this short time, we've seen positive momentum toward our vision. We're more than confident that the same positive results will present themselves here in Baltimore. It's a unique opportunity for Rock Gaming to be a partner on this project, especially with this former Harvard professor. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcoming Caesar Chairman and CEO, Gary Love. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Horseshoe Baltimore. We're very pleased to have you here today. These events are tremendously rewarding to all of us that have been involved in this effort, our colleagues at CBAC Gaming and Rock Gaming and everyone at the city led by our mayor. We've been working on this for some time, and if I may say so a bit immodestly, we put together an all-star team of local partners led by Tony Deering and his colleagues, and they advised us on how we might approach the prospects of winning this license in Baltimore. We were fortunate enough to do so, and we're now beginning to build a world-class facility to be integrated, as Jeff described, into this great city. Now, you may know I'm a native Bostonian, so I support the silver and blue and red team, but I've never been happier to be just down the street from the world champion Baltimore Ravens. And to be a participant in the creation of a sector of your city that we think will become increasingly dynamic and vibrant as the casino opens and the reach from here down toward the stadium and into the Inner Harbor and all the other wonderful things, the aquarium and the great hotels, the Grand Prix and all the other assets of the city that you're all so proud of will begin to, to blossom even more than they have heretofore. You heard our partner Jeff Cohen describe the unique feature of an urban casino. This really is something new in the history of the casino industry. You may have seen in some movies and other descriptions of our industry that the thought was we'd build this all-inclusive place and it would be nearly impossible to get out. We would hide the exit signs and we'd make sure there were no clocks and somehow you'd be captive to everything within the four walls of the facility. And of course, nothing could be further from the truth than the model for Horseshoe Baltimore and the other facilities that we've built with Jeff and his partners. The idea instead is to provide some of the important services within this building, but then to make our facility permeable and welcoming to all of the great existing facilities, restaurants, hotels, nightclubs, museums, and events that take place in Baltimore in a spirit of partnership. And you heard Jeff describe the successes of this so far in Cleveland. In just over a year, five million people have visited Horseshoe Cleveland. $17 million has been spent with local vendors who provide services to these guests and some $55 million just in one year have been paid to the 1,600 new employees that were fortunate enough to be chosen from 60,000 applicants who presented themselves at that facility. The hotels in Cleveland have enjoyed a 12% increase in occupancy. As is the case here, we do not operate a hotel, but instead depend on the hotels available in the city, 61,000 room nights, and some $2.4 million of meals purchased from our partners nearby. The state of Ohio has enjoyed $25 million in tax proceeds and $8 million has gone to the Cleveland area schools. So just from this example and the one underway in Cincinnati, I think you can see why we're so excited to be a part of this city. Now we'll appeal to those who live nearby and in the general region around Baltimore and greater uh, Baltimore area, but we'll also bring all of our best customers from around the world to visit here in Baltimore for all the special events that occur here around the year. We become specialists at this, bringing our customers, for example, to the World Cup in Johannesburg, where we have a casino. And last year, 
our best customers to London for the London Olympic Games and to New Orleans for the Mardi Gras and other great events. We'll be doing the same thing here in Baltimore for football games and baseball games and Grand Prix and other great events that occur. Such a project never works well unless it's done in a spirit of partnership and trust and collaboration with local leadership. We had the opportunity to meet Mayor Rawlings Blake at the beginning of this process and she welcomed us to the city, to Charm City, and described her vision for how we could engage in what she's trying to do with all of you here to enhance what is already one of the great American cities. And we've enjoyed her support throughout the legislative process of the last session in the Maryland legislature and through to a series of outcomes that have made this facility possible. Along the way, we've had the support of Governor O'Malley, uh, Speaker Bush, Senate President Miller, certainly an interesting crew to work with in Annapolis. I had the chance to do so on several occasions. Uh, never have I seen so many members of the same party who disagree about so much. But fortunately, despite that, we were able to generate, with their leadership, a result that has served the industry and I think served the city well. Uh, we wouldn't be here today without a number of others who have helped us in the industry. Don Fry and his commission, Kim Butler and the team at the BDC, Stephen Martino and the staff at the Lottery Commission, and any number of other state local officials who have helped us along the way. I'm here to say to you on behalf of Caesars and our 80,000 people that we will build a place that you'll be proud of in this great city. We will be a first-class neighbor and a first-class partner with all of you in the next step of what happens here in Baltimore. And with that, I'd like to introduce our partner and, and great friend in this effort, your mayor, Mayor Rawlings Blake. Good afternoon, everyone. Gary, thank you so much for the kind introduction, and it is only, only for, uh, out of my love and respect for Mayor Menino that I'll let you get away with that slight <laughs> reference to the team from uh, New England. I, I really look forward to the, continuing the great uh, work relationship, great, great partnership between Baltimore and Caesars Entertainment. I want to also thank John Payne and Chad Barnhill, who have worked very closely uh, with the city and have been great partners as well. This is an exciting day for Baltimore and for the state of Maryland. It is no small feat to get to this point. Today we are celebrating a major milestone, moving this critically important project forward. Before I begin, I want to thank all of my colleagues in government for their unwavering support. Today, we are honored to be joined uh, by members of the state delegation as well as members of the Baltimore City Council. Senator Bill Ferguson is here. Uh, Senator Nathaniel McFadden is here. Uh, Delegate Nathaniel Oakes is here. Delegate Sean Tarrant, I know I saw him from the City Council. We have the Dean of the City Council, uh, Councilman Ricky Spector. Uh, the Vice President of the City Council, who is also the, uh, the council person for, um, not that you'll have any residents, but for the business of the, whor of the horseshoe, uh, unless, you, unless you count Council uh, Manwelch's mom, who I'm sure will be down here quite a bit. <laughs> Councilman uh, Pete uh, Welch is here. Councilwoman Sharon uh, Middleton is here. Councilman Bobby Curran, who might have to, uh, you might have to cheat on your horse, horses to come down here to the, to the horseshoe uh, and be supportive. And Councilman Bill Henry, I, I hope, thank you all for, for being here. We can give them all a hand. Oh, Council, Councilman Nick Mosby, thank you very much for being here as well. You're not sitting with the class, so I missed you, I'm sorry. So early on, these leaders understood the significance of this investment and its ability to help us create more jobs and opportunities for our citizens. Uh, the, the council in particular, I want to thank uh, with the leadership of uh, the vice president who really took the lead on a lot of this, move this project forward deliberately, inclusively, and efficiently. And I really want to thank uh, the vice president for all of uh, his hard work. As you know, local, small, and minority-owned businesses are vital to growing our economy and are important to me and to the city of Baltimore. And there are several small business, small, minority, and local-owned businesses that will be a part of this project. And if you will indulge me, I just want to talk about a few. Kevin Johnson and Marty Glaze of Commercial Construction, they're here. Plus Jones, I see you in your, in your work outfit, P&J Contracting and Demolition. 
Nick Trappis of Art Construction Services. Thank you for being here. Denise Sullivan of Urban Green Tank Removal. Sharon Jeringen, I hope I'm Jeringen, and James Jeringen of Jeringen Contract Foundation and Pumping. I hope you're here as well. You might be already out there on the scene um, site working. And Jerome Stevens and Brunelda Stevens of a and Construction and Utilities. Thank you for all of our local minority partners for stepping up to the plate. I'm really proud to say that as of today, 16 of the 24 minority contractors that will be working on this project are city certified companies. I also want to quickly recognize those individuals in my administration who have been involved and will continue to be involved throughout this process, playing a vital role in making sure that the local residents and minority businesses are connected with jobs and business opportunities associated with this project. Brenda McKenzie, BDC president, and her team of professionals. I really want to thank the team of BDC for moving this project forward. Especially Kim Clark, I know that I, I think I saw Kim in here, who's, yes, there you are in your ponytail, who's been working on this project and never giving up. Miss Karen Sitnik, I hope she's here. Uh, develop, yeah, Karen, Mayor's Office of Employment Development. At my direction, Karen has been working with Seabag Gaming to develop a local hiring plan designed to ensure the city residents are prepared for and have access to the job opportunities which will result from this project. In keeping with this plan, MOAD has created a new recruitment coordinator position to help identify qualified city residents to apply for positions at this facility. Yes, we will do this for Horseshoe Casinos, but if you are a job creator in Baltimore, we will do this for you too. We have a concierge service through the Mayor's Office of Employment Development. We are your outsourced human resource department. If you need an employee, do not fear. Just tell us what you want. And as Romney said, we'll give you a binder full of, of capable, qualified candidates. I want to also acknowledge Sharon Pender, Director of Mayor's Office of Minority and Women-Owned Business Development in, co in coordinating our MBE WBE community. Thank you, Sharon. I also want to thank Tom Noonan of Visit Baltimore. I know that you can't wait to start talking about the, there, yes, start talking about this. And I didn't recognize uh, Senator Verna Jones Rodwell. I saw you, sorry, I, I missed you. I don't know how in the beautiful purple, Ravens purple. I don't know how I, I missed you. I also want to thank my economic and neighborhood development team as well as the housing department. I know that uh, Commissioner Graziano is here. So I want to thank all of those partners. Now, after saying all of that, I want everyone to close your eyes for just a moment and imagine this area in the next three to five years. Building off of the strength of Camden Yards, M&T Bank Stadium and our great hotels and restaurants, this gateway into Baltimore so downtown will be transformed. The Horseshoe Casino will not only be an economic generator uh, in terms of new jobs and tax revenues, it will be an engine that will fuel millions of dollars in new development throughout this area. Funds from this casino, including, casino, excuse me, including table game revenues, will be used to help build new schools, recreation centers to support community grants in South Baltimore and in the communities of Park Heights. In addition, the city's income from the ground lease supports a 20 cent property tax reduction for Baltimore City homeowners. This is a major step forward in our ongoing efforts to provide tax relief to attract and retain our residents and most importantly, Horseshoe has committed to the Employ Baltimore program and will make every effort to employ Baltimore City residents. Make no mistake, the economic impact of this project on the city is historic. And on the heels of the worst recession since the Great Depression, when many families are still struggling to find job opportunities, this could not come at a better time. During construction of this project, it will support nearly 2,000 direct and indirect construction jobs and $119 million in wages and benefits. And once it's open, 
The horseshoe is expected to generate 1,900 direct and indirect permanent jobs and wages and benefits of $72 million each year. I'm also very proud of the fact that my administration was successful in this past, in this past session in passing a bill to ensure that the citizens in need of a second chance are not legally denied the opportunity to apply for casino jobs. This is about being inclusive and making sure that all of Baltimore's residents have opportunities here with this incredible, with this incredible project. Horseshoe brings with it the promise of a new day for Baltimore. It means more reasons for people to visit this wonderful city. It means more business for our local tourism and hospitality economy. It means even more investment in downtown's gateway. Visitors will come to experience the excitement of the casino and they will be taken in by the lure of our local shops and restaurants and amenities that make Baltimore the Baltimore that we know and love. I want to thank Caesars, and I also have a thank you to the dozens of local partners who have committed millions to this project. Thank you for believing in Baltimore and making sure that our best days are ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor, and thanks to all the folks that the mayor called out who have been so important to us. I want to quickly mention three important people in my world that have played a critical role in this development. The first is Greg Miller, seated here, who's the head of development for our company and has looked after and championed this project all along. Then to my left, two over here, this young man, John Payne, is my colleague for 13 years who leads the development of our new facilities. And then I want to introduce you to two very important new Baltimoreans. The first is coming back to this area, having spent much of his life here. His name is Alex Dixon. Alex is right here. His lovely wife is right there with her mother. Alex is a graduate of Howard University. Then he, he fell a little bit aside and went to work at Goldman Sachs. Now that's unfortunate, but not unforgivable. And we welcomed him back. And he's been with us now for a number of years. He's a very talented young guy who has a very bright future with us. He'll be the assistant general manager here. And then to my immediate left is our leader here in Baltimore. I hope many of you have had a chance to meet him. He's had a distinguished 18-year career with our company where he's done virtually everything one can do in a casino, and he's done it well. He's a graduate of Milken University and also Western Kentucky University. Over these 18 years, he's led every imaginable part of our business, most recently in Bossier City, and now our general manager at Horseshoe Baltimore, ladies and gentlemen, Chad Barnhill. Thank you. Thank you. Excited to be here today. Welcome, everyone. I'll be brief. I know it's warm. Uh, but it is a pleasure to be here, and it is an exciting day in Baltimore. Uh, I'm thrilled we could share this experience with the many friends, partners, uh, colleagues, and supporters that are here. Uh, as Gary uh, you know, alluded to, I've been in Baltimore for a while. Uh, I've done a, a lot of quote unquote market research, I guess I should politically correct call it, uh, in trying out the local restaurants and hotels. Um, and have found some, some real gems in the city. Uh, but the important part really that I take away from that is not just the great restaurants and the great hotels that we'll be able to partner with, but it's also the people that I've enjoyed talking to. It's the people that own and operate and work in these businesses. It's the people that come in from out of town uh, that frequent these businesses. And it, the one thing that is very clear whenever you talk to whether it's residents of the city or people that are visiting is people love this city. They absolutely love the city, and we're thrilled to be here and be able to be part of this. There's no question that we have a lot to live up to at Horseshoe Baltimore. We're going to be judged by high standards, and rightfully so. Fortunately, I know we will exceed those expectations. We're doing it now in cities and towns throughout the, throughout the country, and we're going to do it here in Baltimore next. We're going to start by building a world-class facility right here on this spot, over $400 million. Uh, the facility will serve as a southern gateway, or the, the casino will serve as a southern gateway to the city. Uh, Horseshoe Baltimore will be a proud landmark that announces your arrival into the great city and serve as an anchor for future development between here and, and M&T Bank Stadium. Next, we're going to hire and train the best team right here in Baltimore. I'm looking at Karen right there, right? Um, we're excited about it, though. We're, we're going to be Baltimore City's casino, and the best way to do that is to hire Baltimore City residents, and we're committed to that. Finally, we're gonna, we're gonna employ some competitive advantages that we have as well. Our total rewards player loyalty program is the best in the industry. We offer our players recognition and rewards that no other casino can offer. 
from trips to properties in Las Vegas, Lake Tahoe, and New Orleans to advantages that they have with local uh, partners right here in Baltimore City. We also will offer the most uh, ambitious promotions that the, that the industry has to offer. You know, a lot of casinos think that giving away a car is a big deal. Well, whenever you work for Caesars owned property, we think bigger. We, we're known for conducting innovative promotions with individual prizes reaching a million dollars. That's big, and we're going to bring that to Baltimore. Horseshoe Baltimore will also be the only casino in the market that can give players access to the richest sporting event in the country, the World Series of Poker. Through our World Series of Poker circuit events, players will be able to win huge prizes here in Baltimore, as well as seats in our annual event in Las Vegas. Since 1970, we've given away more than 1.5, listen closely, billion dollars, with a B, 1.5 billion dollars out in poker prize money to poker players. So we're used to being in a league of our own, and we're looking forward to making Baltimore home and the area's best gaming experience, and the same time create jobs and further economic development right here in Baltimore. I would like to recognize real quick just John Payne. I know John, uh, Gary mentioned John a second ago. Um, but thank you for your guidance and support through the planning steps. I really appreciate that. It's great to have Alex on board. Uh, you know, he has a lot of local knowledge and be able to add a lot to the project as well. In closing, I owe the most thanks to, to everybody out here. Thank you for the support. Uh, I could go through and, and list a number of people, but I would probably go individually. I see so many that I owe a great amount of gratitude to. So thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you again in the months to come and celebrating our grand opening together in 2014. Thank you very much. And on the count of three, with one, two, three.